Welcome back to the Digilent Physical Computing Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section, we'll learn how to blink an LED and then update the code to automatically blink the LED at a specified rate. In LabVIEW, I'll click Help and choose Find Examples. This will bring up the LabVIEW Example Finder, which contains hundreds of examples and is a great place to start if you're new to LabVIEW. I'll click on the Search tab and then search for Links. Then I'll open the Links Blink Simple VI. I'll double click it and the front panel will open. I'll close Example Finder. And in the Serial Port section, I'll click the drop down and choose COM4. For the digital output channel, I'll choose pin 13 because that's connected to an LED on the chipkit WF32. Then I'll click the Run button to run the VI. It'll take just a second for LabVIEW to establish a connection to the chipkit. And when it does, you'll see the RX and TX lights flash very quickly or even appear to be solid on. Once that connection's established, I can click the LED on the front panel and the LED on the chip kit will turn on and off as I click the front panel control. Let's take a look at the code. I'll click the stop button and then I'll press control E to bring up the block diagram. I'll press Control H to bring up context help so we can see what these VIs are. We can see the first VI is the initialize VI. This establishes a connection to whichever links device we're talking to, in this case, the chipkit WF32. Then inside the while loop, we call the digital write one channel VI. We pass it a channel, which is a U8 that we specified on the front panel. And there's a Boolean input that determines if the digital write value is high or low and that's the LED on our front panel. We check for errors and stop the loop if we see any or if we press the stop button. Then outside the loop, we close the connection to the chip kit using the links close VI. This is important because it closes the connection to the chip kit and frees that COM port so that you can use it again later. If you don't call the close VI, the COM port might be left open and won't close until you close LabVIEW or manually close it. At the end, we use the simple error handler to report any errors to the user. Let's modify this code to blink the LED automatically at a specified rate. I'll add some room to the block diagram, and we'll use a shift register to store the Boolean value that we want to write to the LED. I'll right click on the edge of the while loop and choose add shift register. Then I'll use quick drop by pressing control space to place a false constant. This will be our starting value and we'll use it to initialize the shift register. So I'll place it outside the loop and wire it into the shift register. Now I want to toggle this value each loop iteration. So I'll use a not primitive. I'll right click to bring up the functions palette, choose Boolean and not, and I'll place the not primitive. So each loop iteration will take our Boolean value, we'll invert it and wire it into the digital write. Now, when I connected those wires, you'll notice that the wires broke. That's because we have two values, the value from our LED control and from this Boolean going to the same input. And we can't have that. Since we're automatically blinking the LED, we won't need this LED control anymore. So I'll click to select it and delete it. And then I'll press control B to remove the broken wire fragments. Now we need to store a value to use in our next iteration. So I'll take the output of the knot and hover over it until my cursor changes into a spool of wire to branch that wire. And I'll wire that into the right shift register. Now each loop iteration, we invert the value, write it to the LED, and then save it in the shift register to use in the next loop iteration. Now we just need to add some timing to control the speed at which the LED blinks. I'll use quick drop by pressing control space and type wait to place the wait millisecond primitive. I'll place that inside my loop and then on the input terminal, I'll right click and choose create constant. This constant represents the number of milliseconds to delay. To start out, let's delay one second each loop iteration. So I'll type 1000. Now we're ready to run our VI. I'll click the run button and we'll wait just a second for LabVIEW to establish a connection to the chip kit. Once it does, the RX and TX lights will flash 
and you can see that the LED turns on and off at a one second interval. I'll switch to the front panel and click stop to stop the VI. Let's update the code so that we can modify the rate at which it blinks while it's running. I'll click back on the block diagram and right click on the 1000 constant and choose change to control. This will change that constant to a control. And if I double click on it, we can find it on the front panel and I'll just move it into a little more convenient place. Now we can type a value in here and update the delay as our program is running. So I'll click run. And again, we'll give it just a second to connect to the chip kit. And we can see our LED is blinking at a one second interval. And then I'll change it to 500. Now the loop delays 500 milliseconds each iteration. And you can see the LED blinks faster. Let's try 100 and the LED blinks even faster. And let's try 10. And at that point, it looks like the LED is almost solid on. So that does it for our basic blink example. Make sure to join us next time when we'll learn how to control multiple LEDs. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.